Hey guys, so there's another feature that I've been really enjoying with Z Editor. It's called Tasks, and essentially it's just a way for you to run commands right within the editor. And if you go to the documentation page here, you see how it's all created. So essentially it's just JSON objects that defines what the task is. Give it a label, which is a name, a command, it can be whatever you want, an environment variable if needed. You can say if you want a new terminal every time you run the command or not, or if you want to be able to run the command multiple times at the same time. Reveal here is just essentially saying, I want to open the terminal whenever I run the command or not. And there are some variables here that you want to look into as well, uh, which will tell you like the file name you're working with or the file path or the symbol right under the cursor, for example, a function name, and you can set a key map for it or a key binding. So let's jump into it and show you how it works. It's really amazing. So here I have a very basic Golang project, nothing special, just some um, random code. And I have a very simple make file as well, which essentially I can do something like make run, and it will just run the app, for example, or make test, it will run some dummy tests. That's pretty much it. So let's look into the tasks now. So if you open up the command palette and type in task, here you see the different options we have. So we can open up the configuration for the task, a uh, local configuration for it, so per project, or you can spawn, which means like run a command or not, or rerun, basically it will run the last command you just ran. So let's open up spawn first, and there's an example task that they create for us. If you run that, you see that it just prints hello from one to five. And so it opens up this thing for us in a terminal, and when it's done, and then shows you the output. So let's open up our tasks again, and this time let's open up this guy here which is the configuration. This one is the global one. The commands you have here will run pretty much everywhere in all the projects. And here you see like the command we just ran. So essentially it's called example task. And here's the command they just ran for us. So for I in one to five, echo hello, and then sleep for one second. Then we have this environment, which is bar, and then use new terminal false, meaning that every time you run the command, it will use the same terminal. Concurrent, no, you can only run this one time every time you run the command. And then reveal, you always want to show that terminal. Cool, so now let's create our own commands and um, let's keep this for reference and then let's try to add a bunch for us. So we're in a Go project. So let's say we have Go, Go Run, for example, which is a command we're going to use to run the file. So we can say command and then we say here, for example, Go Run dot. And do we want to use a new terminal every time we run this? True is good here. Concurrent, uh, I don't think we need that because you probably want to run your app once. And then reveal. Um, let's say always for now. Now, if you go back to your main and just type in task and spawn, you see we have go run. If you press on it, here you see our app run and it just shows you the output. Now I have control D map to close this open uh, pane. So that will close it for me. Yeah, so that's basically how we do it globally. So we can now remove this one here and I'll just paste some of my commands that I worked on. So now here's some of the commands that I created already. So essentially run, test, build, tidy, init, and test a specific function. This is pretty cool. So if I have this, um, let's say this simple test file here, and here you see we have go test a, a function or like a single function essentially. So wh what you do here is go test and run the Z symbol and Z file. So what I want to do is uh, I want to get to this test name essentially. So that's, that would essentially be equal to the Z symbol. And I have spawn here. And I want to say test a function. This will run the ta uh, essentially this specific function for us. The cool thing now is if I do something like task rerun, it will run the same exact command. So it will be the same test, for example. And you can see the workflow here. Like, so if you're writing some big function or something and you have a test for it and you want to keep running the test every time you make a change, you can simply rerun the same command. Now for key maps, I mapped essentially task spawn and task rerun to spawn space or leader RT and leader, leader RE. So this way I can be here and say leader RE and I'm rerunning the same test and then control D to close that. And then if I do leader RT, I'll open up all my predefined commands. So you see there's a bunch here. So I can do tidy for example. Now I said we can do also tasks locally per project. So if I press task here and open up local task, you see it creates this dot Z and task.json within the Go project. So you can essentially use this as a way to specify tasks or commands specifically for your project. You can have to do this once maybe or, or update it every now and then, but it's something that you can reuse all the time and I think it will be super helpful. So I have this make file, right? 
So I can do tidy, I can do run build, run test, etc. If you go here, you see we have, you know, make run, make test, and in these examples, I don't want to open a new terminal, and I don't want to allow for concurrent runs, and I always want to show the terminal when I run something. So if I go to main here, and I open up tasks, so leader RT, and type in main, or make, you see we have all the commands we just created, so I can say make run, this will run the app for me. Now, here's another feature that I really think is awesome to look into. Now, this thing obviously is running go PLS, right? Now, there are some tools that we can use, Here's one tool that I really like using called Go Modify Tags, which is just a handy tool created by Fatih. And this tool, essentially, it's a CLI tool that will uh, create some tags for your structs, like add JSON or remove like this one here. So to install it, you can just say Go Install and pass in the URL. And if you go back here, I already did that, by the way. So I have it installed on my, my machine. If I open up my terminal, you can see like Go Modify Tags. It's already something that I have uh, installed. And here, if you scroll down a bit, you see how we can use that. So here's a good example. So you just type in go modify tags, pass in a flag for the file, and then file name, struct, server, and then you need to pass in uh, essentially json-w to write. If you don't pass in dash w, it's just going to print out this uh, new struct with the json to the std out. So if you go back to our editor here, and we go to tasks, Remember, I already installed this tool, so we can use it now. Here's what I did. Let me just copy this for you. So now I have, essentially, these two commands that use the CLI tool. And I just named it add JSON to struct, remove JSON from struct. And I simply say go modify tags, dash file. I need the file path, so I use Z file, and dash struct, to say like this is a struct. Z symbol, it's going to be something like person here. And I want to add tag, JSON, JSON tags essentially, and I want to write it. The remove one is just the same thing, you're just going to remove it essentially. And because this is something I want to run in the background, meaning that I don't really care to open up the terminal for this, I just want it to happen essentially. So what I did is I first set use new terminal to false, allow concurrent to true, because you might have like multiple structs that you want to run the same command on, and I don't want to ever reveal this, so I don't want to show the terminal when I run this command. So let's test this out. If I'm here, and I press space RT, and I go to add JSON to struct, wait a second, and then it just adds it for you. Now we have JSON name and JSON age here. If you want to remove it, you just have to go back to this person, like the actual symbol. That's the trick here. You always have to be on top of the symbol because you're actually getting this word and using it. And if I press uh, space RT and say remove JSON from struct, you see it will remove it for you. Now it's a bit slow, which is kind of annoying, but it works. And that's pretty awesome because, you no, know, GoPS can do a lot of things, but some of these handy tools, we actually want to use them. So one thing to notice here that if you look at the original example, so if you go back to our example here, you can essentially have any kind of code here, not just like here you see that they have a for loop. So you could have like some custom things that you've written and you just use them as a command, which is really powerful. And the cool thing is like you can use them whether from the CLI or from the editor itself. For the key maps, what I did is I basically set the context to be empty pane and shared screen, vim operator none, and whether it's insert mode or not. So you can imagine yourself using something like this for some node projects or a zig project or even rest projects. The cool thing is like now within my workflow, I can just press space RT and essentially look up any command I want, like let's say make run, and I'm good to go. This would be awesome actually with testing, because let's say I'm in this uh, even test here, and I want to run this test. So when I run or test a function, I call it. There you have it. Now it shows me the test result. And let's say if I go back here and I'm doing some, you know, whatever crap here, I can simply press leader RT from here and it will run the same test, which is this one anywhere, which is amazing. So if you're, if you keep like, you know, implementing this function, you have a specific output you're looking for, this will be a very nice workflow. So yeah, there you have it. This is Z tasks is pretty amazing. Um, I can see myself using this a lot. And, you know, the more tools you discover, you can actually kind of integrate them with this editor and suddenly have a, a, an editor that has a ton of features like, like JetBrain Golan or something like that. So yeah, that's all I want to share today. Hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.